my name is Shiv Kumar. I run a company called Exotel. Uh, we are into what's broadly being called as cloud telephony. So uh, just on cloud telephony, can you also just elaborate on some of the opportunities you might have uh, with VOIP? Because we want to get a sense of, let's say, hypothetically, if there's a situation where there is unrestricted, unencumbered VOIP everywhere, right? How does that impact a, uh, a startup is was something that we need to understand. Sure. So I think... What uh, are the services that you might launch? Uh, what, is, what is stopping you from launching certain certain services, how will it impact your costs? So I think, uh, uh, do people largely understand what cloud telephony is? Uh, okay, so lots uh, of people. I think you might have to introduce cloud telephony. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I think uh, cloud telephony is largely used in the context of uh, enterprise communication. Uh, so on the consumer side, well, people have always used a cell phone, so there isn't really much of a hardware. But on the enterprise communication side, people have invested a lot of money on uh, devices such as uh, PPX. Uh, and depending on how complex your uh, system is, I think uh, Avaya system can cost two, three crores a pop, uh, depending on how large a call center you're trying to set up. Uh, so just like how computing moved from on-premise to the cloud, it, there is a possibility for us to move communication from on-prem to the cloud as well. Uh, so this is largely the uh, point of cloud telephony. Uh, now, telephony, of course, is very specific. Uh, we can say cloud communications, which also includes uh, uh, video conferencing and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, so, so that's what we all do. Now, what exactly we do in cloud communications is, of course, different. Uh, we are about three, four people sitting here. Uh, there are about maybe a dozen companies in India that does this. So that's the cloud telephony table. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Exotel specifically focuses a lot on uh, what we call as APIs. Do people understand APIs? So, um, so broadly, you can imagine it to be like a, a way in which uh, we could now break down the several things that you can do on a phone call, like ring a call, or hang up, or collect a key press, or record a call, or put somebody into conference, or play a sound. So these are all like the building blocks of what can be done on a phone call. All of this is now stripped down and offered as APIs for people to use and embed that into their software or business model. So this is at a very, very basic level. Now, of course, all of us can talk separately about what. So the, the far end of this is uh, applications can, such as call can, center on the cloud. Can you give some examples of services that are possible? Uh, sure. So somebody could now you, uh, build a call center on the cloud. So that's uh, a product that, that we would have all. Uh, so that's something that Ozontel, for example, does uh, quite a bit. Uh, we uh, do a bunch of things. Uh, most of you here have used Exotel if you have hailed a Ola or a Uber. So we protect uh, consumer privacy by ensuring that your phone number does not go to the driver and uh, sometimes vice versa as well. So all of that is powered by Exotel. Uh, so VMC does a little bit of uh, incoming call center call management on the cloud as well. So uh, so this is, I mean, there are several apl applications you can do conferencing. Um, so so can you give an example of conferencing that might happen? So uh, marketplaces is a great example. So you search for something on Just Dial, you want to now call the service provider. Uh, I mean, if you call the service provider directly, then Just Dial would not know that you've actually reached out to them. Uh, so they would like to actually track this call so that they can go and charge them for a lead. Now, would it be possible for a marketplace to uh, put up random numbers on the mobile app or on the website so that you call in through this number to the third party and all of this call is now recorded, tracked, so quality can be maintained, lead can be tracked, et cetera. So, uh, so that's one use case. Uh, so they have done, Ozontel has done a pretty interesting uh, uh, concept with cloud telephony. So they approach voice as a media property. Uh, so there are hinterlands where the only way to reach people is through a voice call. So there is no radio, there is no TV, there's nothing. So in those cases, what if we could now call out a person and play uh, perhaps a media clip, uh, and then could we now intersperse that with ads? So Ozontel has done a little bit of that with uh, Unilever. So that's something that we've done. We've uh, ourselves actually done uh, work with Pratham Books where underprivileged kids uh, are delivered uh, bedtime stories over phone calls. So that's the kind of work that we've done. Uh, so I think, I mean, basically it's up to the imagination of people. Once you give these APAs, once you give the building blocks, this is like Lego. People can put it together and they can do whatever they want. So, you know, as a founder, what would th change if you also had VOIP in the mix, or if you also had IP in the mix? Sure, so I think uh, several complications come down. I think IP in general, 
uh, is a little bit more easier to deploy, manage, and operate. So right now we are actually managing uh, you know, thousands of boxes and wires across several data centers around the country, which is non-trivial. Uh, so to build a cloud communication platform in India is all that much more harder compared to building something, something in the US. Uh, some of you may have heard of uh, companies such as Twilio or Ring Central, uh, 8x8, Shortel. So these are all companies in the US that, cloud, that do cloud communication. So for them, it's as easy as uh, getting a virtual line into AWS and they're all set. Uh, so I actually have like few hundred servers distributed across circle by circle, data center by data center, line by line, restrictions around what can be mixed, what can't be mixed, etc. So that just makes it really hard for us to... Uh, so therefore what you're saying is complexity of your business will go down significantly. That's right. Because you can operate through one server or through AWS directly. That's right. Uh, second, what you're saying is that your cost of operations will go come down. Come down, so the cost of giving it to the customer will come down, so it's just going to become cheaper for for everybody who's using it. Yeah. I don't really have a lot of deep insight. I, I was a regular user like tens of thousands of people of Subsebolo and uh, then it shut down. I understand the regulatory challenges faced included the fact that, I mean, it was a cloud-based service. They were using VOIP at the back end. There was clearly PSTN, VOIP interconnect happening. And uh, there are issues with that, which the current consultation paper on VOIP internet telephony is, is trying to also address. And by the way, this question has been there in the air for about 20 years, I think I've been hearing about VOIP. Uh, but uh, I don't know if somebody else has insight into the Subsebolo issue in a little more depth. And just to answer your question, if VOIP is mm, available, well, how can we leverage that? Uh, right now, we are only operating at enterprise level because it's PST and it's much more costly. So we cannot go at consumer level. But if VOIP is made available to us, the cost is going to be a lot lower. We'll, we'll, we'll have ability to operate at consumer level. So we'll become direct competition to the large uh, telcos, that's why they don't like it. But what is what are the kinds of services? I mean, all kinds. We can we can provide the tr normal telephony service that uh, telco provides to consumers as well. Hmm. Along with that, they will have all kinds of. Along with that, we will have all kinds of data that we can do analytics on that we can do. I think you should talk about Spoken because you were on the board. <laughs> okay, so Spoken uh, actually grew out of a company that existed 20 years ago called Hotphone, and in fact, Hotphone. Uh, at, at one point, it was an incredible India uh, entrepreneurship story. It was run out of a bedroom in Hyderabad. It was delivering one million minutes a day across 40 countries in 3,000 cities 12 years ago, entirely using VOIP. And it was entirely underground. So it was uh, one of those crazy, ridiculous Indian technology stories. Uh, Spoken was the polished, completely legal version of them. <laughs> right? So, uh, so Spoken, actually, even though JDS6 is defunct, Spoken, I think, still functions. Uh, I think so, because I still get billed $1 a month. Uh, so I guess some, something must be functioning somewhere. I'm not sure where it goes. But essentially, what it does is exactly the same thing. Make a local call uh, on PSTN, dial out over the cloud to uh, another point, which makes a local call there, and then hence connects any two numbers in the world at virtually no cost. So that's really the entire business. Uh, every way that we got a bunch of lawyers to look at it, it was absolutely clean. It was using VOIP internationally. It was using paying local call rates locally. It was just auto switching. Uh, it had the intelligence in the network to be able to say, if I am dialing him in the US, it knows that I have to dial this number in Delhi. Delhi will dial that number in the US, which will dial his number. And actually, it will make that three hop call for a one hop call. It was doing that pretty straightforward. I didn't know about Spoken, but uh, there's a company I know who's been trying this uh, in the last one year out of Delhi. And uh, they applied, they tried the level best through lawyers and uh, you know, all kinds of consultants. And the DOT has actually turned them down, saying that it's illegal. So here's the interesting thing. Spoken is not registered in India. But it offers okay, services but, uh, which are legal in India, so it did, uh, did not. But what this company was trying to do was a very simple, uh, simple sort of technique that uh, they, I mean, supposing you were traveling overseas, you would forward your mobile number to a PSTN line here in Delhi, and any caller to that number would just uh, hear a message saying that this person is traveling and you'll receive a call back. And that call would get disconnected. Then that, uh, the two numbers would be transferred to servers in the US, not through PSTN. I mean, there would be just a database lookup. And then the server in the US would launch two calls, just like uh, Spoken did. 
and connect the two parties, which is perfectly legal because there's no PST and interconnect, there's no nothing. Uh, but so, DOT so turned it down. So which part was deemed illegal here? Yeah. Sorry? Which part was deemed illegal? I'm curious. Yeah. Uh, they said the whole thing is because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a call forwarding service disguised as a, as a missed call service. Okay, so I don't know. That's a different methodology. Yeah, we can talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. sure, sir. So um, what needs to change in regulations and can we really expect something to change? Uh, no, I think the point I'm trying to make is that uh, the regulators uh, are so close to any kind of new technique or technologies that